Welcome back. In this YouTube video, I'm looking at 4.5 tilting. 4.5 represents Chapter 4, Section 5 of the Pearson A Level Mass Applied Mass Year 2 textbook. Let's go through the key facts of this section. Ladies and gents, if a rigid body is in equilibrium, two conditions are satisfied. Condition number one, resultant force vertically is equal to zero. Condition number two, sum of clockwise moment is equal sum of anti-clockwise moment. The moment of a force is given by force multiplied by the perpendicular distance. The unit that we use for the moment of a force is Newton meter. Consider the following rigid bodies. Let's start off with this rigid body. Tilting about A implies that the normal reaction at B is equal to zero. So if it tilts about A, the body is not in contact with the support at B, hence the normal reaction at B is equal to zero. Let's have a look at this rigid body. Tilting about B implies that the normal reaction at A is equal to zero. So if the body tilts about B, we know that the body is not in contact with the support at A, hence the normal reaction at A is equal to zero. These are the key facts of 4.5 tilting. I'll be implementing these key facts within exam style questions. Here is exam style question one. A uniform beam AB of mass 45 kg and length 16 meter rests horizontally on support C and D where A to C is equal 5 meter and C to D is equal 9 meter. When a child stands at A, the beam is on the point of tilting about C. Find the mass of the child. Ladies and gents, I'm going to start by labeling all the forces that act on this particular uniform beam. Now the beam is modeled to be uniform, hence the weight acts at the center. The mass of the beam is 45 kg, the weight is 45 g, acting at the center. Now this weight 45 g is going to split the entire distance 16 meter into two equal parts. 16 divided by 2 is 8. So we've got 8 meter this way and we've got 8 meter this way. The distance A to C is given to be 5 meter. So the distance from the support C to the center of mass is going to be 8 take away 5 which is 3 meter. The distance D to B is given to be 2 meter. So the distance from the support D to the center of mass is going to be 8 take away 2 which is 6 meter. Now in the question we are told tilting about C. So we have tilting about C. This implies that the normal reaction at D is equal to 0. Right, so we don't need to label the normal reaction at D because it's just zero. But what we do need to label is the normal reaction at C. So this body is in contact with the support at C, hence the support C will exert a normal reaction on the body. So we can call this normal reaction R C. Okay, now in the question we are told that a child stands at A. We want to find the mass of the child. So we've got the child standing at A. Let's call the mass m, hence the weight is mg. Right, so this is my complete force diagram. My target is to work out m. So what is m? Right, ladies and gents, if I use condition 1 of equilibrium, resultant force vertically is equal to 0, I'll get an equation with two unknowns. I'll get the rc and I'll get the m, two unknowns. So the first condition of equilibrium does not help me calculate the value of m. Perhaps is the second condition that we have to move on to. Sum of clockwise moment is equal sum of anti-clockwise moment. Now I need to be clever what point I take moments about. So if I take moments about C, this will eliminate all the forces coming out of C, namely RC. Okay, so I'm going to take moments about C in order to calculate the mass M. Right, so we've got condition number two of equilibrium. Sum of clockwise moment is equal sum of anti-clockwise moment and we're going to take moments about C. This will eliminate RC. Right, so if I take moments about C, I'm calculating the moments of two different forces, the mg and the 45g. If I hold on to the point C, and I apply the 45g force, this will take the entire body clockwise. And if I apply the mg force, this will take the entire body anti-clockwise. Sum of clockwise moment is equal sum of anti-clockwise moment. Let's start by calculating the clockwise moment. So the moment of the 45g force. We have the force itself, which is 45g, multiplied by the perpendicular distance from C to that force, which is 3. So 45g multiplied by 3. This must equal the anti-clockwise moment. So we're going to calculate the moment of the mg force. 
So we've got the force itself, mg, multiplied by the perpendicular distance from C to that force, which is 5. So 45g times 3 is 135g, equal mg times 5 is 5mg. Now g is equal 9.8, it is the acceleration due to gravity. Because g is common on both sides, we can divide both sides by g, this will cancel out the g. So we've got 135 is equal 5m. So 135 over 5 is equal m, therefore m is equal 27 kg. So that there ladies and gents is the mass of the child. This completes exam style question 1. Let's have a look at exam style question 2. A plank AB of mass 12 kg and length 3 meter is in equilibrium in a horizontal position resting on supports at C and D where A to C is equal 0.7 meter and D to B is equal 1.1 meter. A boy of mass 32 kg stands on the plank at point E. The plank is about to tilt about D by modelling the plank as a uniform rod and the boy as a particle. Calculate the distance A to E. Ladies and gents, I'm going to start by drawing the plank A to B. So this is the plank A to B. So the plank is modelled to be uniform, hence the weight of the plank acts at the centre. The mass is 12 kg, the weight will be 12 g acting at the centre. Now that 12 g is going to split the entire distance 3 meter into two equal parts. 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. So we've got 1.5 meter this way and we've got 1.5 meter this way. Um, so it is resting in horizontal position on supports at C and D where A to C is equal 0.7 meter. So we can position C somewhere here. The distance A to Z is 0.7 meter. And D to B is equal 1.1 meter. So D to B is 1.1 meter. So D will be somewhere over here. So we've got 1.1 meter. A boy of mass 32 kg stands on the plank at point U. So suppose this is point E. The mass of the boy is 32 kg, hence the weight is 32 g. So what we want to do is calculate the distance A to E. We can call this distance X. Now in the question, we've got tilting about D. So if it's tilting about D, the body is not in contact with the support at C. Hence the normal reaction at C is equal to zero. So we've got tilting, about D, this implies that the normal reaction at C is equal zero. So we don't label the normal reaction at C, but we must label the normal reaction at D because the body is still in contact with the support at D. So that normal reaction, we can call it RD. Now the distance from A to RD will be three meter take away 1.1 meter, which is 1.9 meter. So this distance over here from A to the point D is 1.9 meter. Okay, so this is my complete force diagram. My target is to work out X. Firstly, I've got the unknown RD. I'm going to calculate RD by using condition number one of equilibrium. Resultant force vertically is equal to zero. So I'm going to resolve vertically, taking upwards to be the positive direction. The resultant force F is equal to zero. So ladies and gents, I've got RD minus 32G minus 12G. That is my resultant force F, it must equal zero. So RD minus 44G is equal zero, hence RD is equal 44G, where G is acceleration due to gravity, G is equal to 9.8. So I can label the RD as 44G. Now I'm going to use condition two of equilibrium to work out X. So we've got sum of clockwise moment is equal sum of anti-clockwise moment. Since we're working out the distance from A to E, we're going to take moments about A for simplicity. So take moments about A. So we're calculating the moments of one, two, three different forces. If I hold on to the point A and I apply these two forces, it will take the entire body clockwise. 
If I apply this force, it will take the entire body anti-clockwise. Let's start by calculating the total clockwise moment. Starting off with the moment of the 32G force. So we've got the force 32G multiplied by the perpendicular distance from A to that force 32G, which is X. So 32G times X plus, let's calculate the moment of the 12G force. So it'll be the force 12G multiplied by the perpendicular distance from A to that force, which is 1.5. This must equal the total anti-clockwise moment. So we're going to calculate this anti-clockwise moment. It's going to be the force RD, which is 44G, multiplied by the perpendicular distance from A to that force, which is 1.9. Right, so I've got an equation involving X. I can solve for X. The first term becomes 32GX, plus the second term becomes 18g equal, this term over here becomes 83.6g. I can take the 18g to the right hand side. So I've got 32gx is equal 83.6g, take away 18g, which is 65.6g. Now the g is common on both sides, I can divide both sides of the equation by g, this will cancel the g. So ladies and gents, we have 32, x is equal to 65.6. So x is equal to 65.6 divided by 32, which is 2.05. Therefore, the distance A2E is going to equal x, which is 2.05 meter. And that there, ladies and gents, completes exam style question 2 and this teaching video 4.5 tilting. If you found this teaching video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a new teaching video.